<laughs> so my voice for everybody is right. I, I post every other day, free Palestine. I care about the Palestinian people. I talk about Rwanda. There's no freedom in Rwanda. Uh, there's no freedom in Ethiopia. There's a Tigrayan and the, and the national government are fighting. So I post about everything. I'm actually, human rights are not uh, continental. They're human rights. They're world values. Everyone is born with rights. You know, that no government gives you those rights. So those, those are your rights. So I about everybody's rights. Today we're talking about uh, the situation in Uganda. In Uganda, uh, women are getting raped, men are sodomized, people get disappeared. They call those lorries called drones. They pick up people and they just disappear. Museveni is the new Idi Amin and he's worse. And he has banned Facebook, which is the, like, the biggest platform in Uganda. So you can't even talk about the killings. So imagine you can't meet in Uganda as an opposition leader. The members of parliament in jail in Uganda and they had to come all the way to Kenya to have a meeting to discuss the, the situation of human rights in Uganda. And that's why we must speak for Uganda because Uganda was a place where we ran in the 80s when we had Moy as a dictator. Uh, Uganda is where Kenyans ran in 19, 2007 rather when there was post-election violence. Some never came back. They live in Uganda. Uganda is where our president Kibaki was educated, Makere University. He was a lecturer there. So Uganda has a very strong tie with Kenya. And you can't forget that. Don't take lightly when someone says they're going to change the constitution to extend the, the term limits. Museveni used to joke, the guys around Museveni used to joke about it. And so he said, no, there'll be no, I'll never remove term limits, they need to remove term limits. No one should joke about the constitution of this country and about changing it. I was part of the BBI at Kalinda Katiba with David D, Mother Karua, and the rest, and we oppose the changing of the constitution to, to, to ensure that Uhuru stays in power. We, we oppose that to the, to the very end. And so my point is that you should never allow anyone to joke about the constitution and changing it to benefit an individual. Because when you remove term limits, you're not thinking about the country and the people. You're thinking about one single person, Ruto. That's why they're joking about it. That guy hasn't finished 100 days in office. Unga is still expensive. Petro is still expensive. Cost of living is very, very high. There's insecurity. But the people are prioritizing what? Ch changing term limits or CDF funds or things that benefit them. We're going to the World Cup. Or guys from Kericho coming to Nairobi for a, in a Nairobi hotel to have a, to have a meeting about nonsense. So the truth is, the defenders of the constitution is of the politicians, is the Kenyan people. That's the message that you have to defend the constitution because it belongs to all of us. The lawlessness in this country is because we've allowed thugs to run this country. So my grandfather was in jail for six years uh, for fighting the colonial government. He chose guns to fight the colonial government. And so he laid the foundation for me. I, let me tell you, there's some people that I really think that if it was another time, another generation, it would be actually an armed struggle. I would be actually a freedom fighter in another way. And, but I don't, I don't use violence. There's no why Bobby Wine is in Kenya. Uh, there's no why General Munt is in Kenya. And Dr. Kiza Besija in Kenya is actually because they have chosen non-violence to remove Museveni, who shot his way into power. So I believe in the power of the people. I believe in a, in a ballot revolution. I believe in people power. I don't believe in guns. I am 39 years old, uh, so I have like my entire, uh, the other half of my life is ahead of me. Um, I'm lucky. I'm past my half mark in, in uh, shelf life. You know, the Bible says 70 is what God gives you. Everything else is a bonus. So I have 31 years left in my life going to buy uh, the book of the Bible. But I hope I live longer and healthier. But I really want to see Kenya change. I want to see, I want to, I'm looking forward to living to a day in this country where you can vote leaders for, through merit, not tribe, not bribe, no tribal formations. You know, there's a thing about this country. People think we want to be in power. Power to do what? You just want Kenyans to change for the better. If Kenya was actually a functional working country, I would be still taking pictures. I'm a photographer. Or I would be a ranger looking after work after our world life. I'm serious. I'll be doing a very boring task. But I'm forced to actually wake up every day to use my social media handles to highlight people's problems. My handles are not mine, actually. I'll, I'll post one or two things about myself now and then. But most is about other people's issues. But what I know for sure is I'm going to take a break and a very long break from social media before the end of this month. So I'm going to take a break to go to reflect, to think, to heal. Some of us are still suffering from the loss of the elections. 
Uh, we're still suffering from that. And, and just relax, man. I need to do things with my kids. I have three kids, amazing kids. So I have a lot of things to do. We don't fight. We don't do what you do every day because you have nothing else to do. Or because you're broke. Kenyans don't pay my rent. They don't feed me. They don't do anything for me. I just use my platform to highlight the issues. I'm taking a break because I need to heal. I have a lot of issues that I need to go through, internal issues. So, because if I stay in the limelight, I'll break. So I'm going to take a break, like a sabbatical, just to reflect and, okay. and to heal and maybe see a therapist. But therapists are expensive. <laughs> Am I going to buy again? I don't know. I, I vied five years ago and I did not buy this election because I was even supporting someone who was running for president and deputy president. Maybe in the future, who knows? What you need to play for, or to pray for others, for God to give us long life, bro. Long life. People are dying. You're, in your, you're sleeping in your house. A building collapses, you die. You're driving, there's a drunk driver. Something happens to you. I'll give you an example. So, uh, in September, my wife and I were driving home. We had a driver driving home. And then there's an accident. A drunk driver hit our car. Our car rolled, we crashed, we got robbed. We end up in the hospital, we have no wallets. My wife is unconscious. I tell him to treat my wife and give her emergency care. They ask me for money. I lost my mind and I broke a couple of things. And I was raising the issue, why are you not serving? I thought my wife was actually dying on that table, but they couldn't touch her because there was no money. And I was very mad and I raised my voice and I broke a couple of things that I paid for. And that was a very big issue in this country. What people did not talk about is that emergency health care is a right. They said that I was drunk. I was, I don't know if I was drunk or not. I wasn't driving. It's true. I was, I lost my mind because I thought I was going to lose my wife because I had no money. But that story is the story of this country. Ken Walibora lost his life because he had no money and had no wallet. And then remember this thing. There's also a bigger problem that we had an accident, and the people who responded did not come to save us. They robbed us. So we can sit here and talk about, oh, the Kenya we want, the leaders we want. But the question I have for you, and the question I have for Kenyans, do we have the Kenyans we want for that ideal Kenya? Because that ideal Kenya with good leaders, we need good citizens who don't ask for bribes from, from, from their leaders, who don't take bribes, who don't steal from people, who don't do bad things. So you can't expect to get a mango from an apple seed. Kenyans want to have a very good country, but the voters are rotten. Let me tell you, I cannot disrespect you if you don't give me a reason to. The reason why we lost the, when we lost the Azimio election, right? When we lost the election, we lost the, cost, the court case. And I wrote my reflections about that election. You know, I could speak so frankly without any fear. I did not get a single cent from the campaign. So I was free to speak my mind. Most Kenyans can never speak their mind because they took bribes. So you're complaining about a leader that you, you elected because he bribed you or she bribed you. So let me tell you, when you take a bribe from a politician, those next five years expect to be screwed because the person was not elected on merit, you sold your vote. So you sell your vote, you get garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. You must think about your selfish interest as a voter and beyond a bribe and look at the leaders that represented themselves and say, who among these leaders is the best for the job and the best for the job? But let me tell you, lepers never change the stripes. Just because someone said, I'm born again Christian or said, hallelujah, praise God, doesn't mean they're not going to kill you or destroy you or rob you or harm you. Just because they say the name of the Lord. Because the Bible says, they say the name of my, they mention my name in vain. And not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone who does that. But Kenyans, Kenyans were like, career beyond, don't think beyond, a, think beyond a campaign speech. I wish Ruto well. Truthfully, I even pray for him. I have no hate for nobody. My heart, I have no room for hate. I, I can't carry hate. Do I despise some people? Yes. Like I despise some people. Like I can't sit with you and have a, a bread with you. I was in Azimio. There are guys that I never sat down with. There are people that I never... I would see them there walk on the other side of the room because that's who I am. 
So my point is, I do not hate any of these leaders. Actually, I have no hate for anyone, even the devil, because I don't even know the devil. How can I hate someone that I don't know? I don't hate anyone. Even the guys I see, I don't hate them. I despise their actions. I despise their actions. I despise their lies. And I say, you're not fit for the job and should be replaced. So you must understand there's a, there's, there's a difference. And that's the reason I can't kill. I cannot kill anyone. Because I have no way. You know, for me to kill someone, I have to hate you enough to have reasons enough to kill you. I can't kill anyone because why would I kill you? I have no right. You can harm me and hurt me, and I'll be angry, but I can't touch you, man. Because I'm, I did not give you life. There's a, there's a casualness in this country in how we take life. Casually, yeah. But the guys still in billions don't get touched. There's a spike in crime. But we can't see the correlation between the spike in crime with the, insecure, with the unemployment and poverty levels. When the leaders still, 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 there'll be lack of employment. And there'll be no investment in this country because no one invests in a country where you're not safe. Your money is not safe. There are land grabbers. Someone can wake up and demolish your house. Someone can steal your company and then the judge will be bribed. No one can invest in such a country. So that kind of a country is hostile to investments, which means that by that means that there's no, there's a high level of unemployment. Then there's a high level of crime. The reason why you're getting stabbed and robbed and raped because the leaders you have in power are still in everything that there's no jobs being created. There's a correlation between crime and bad leadership. There's no country in the world, anywhere in the world, that killed every robber and they, there was no crime in the city. What are you going to do? They're going to find ways, more, more ways to continue stealing. So the best way to crime prevention is job creation. That's the best way. Invest in young people. So what next for me? I'm going to take a chill pill and let's see how these leaders do. Hey, you know, and maybe voters will see the lights. Right? <laughs>